Hey, Freedom, it's so good to be with you guys. I really miss you. Can't wait till we're able to get back and worship together. Amen. Every week that, that we're online is one week closer to getting back together. Amen. So be encouraged. Don't get, don't get upset. God's got all this worked out. We're going to be all right. The one thing that I miss the most, though, is, is worshiping with you. We're able to get into the Word online right here, but I miss corporate worship getting together. Holy hands lifted unto the Lord. Amen. I really miss that. Today we're going to, I'm just going to get right into it. This is going to be a lot like Bible study, but I'm going to warn you now I'm going to travel re- rather quickly. So get ready. We're going to get into Matthew chapter 6, and we're just going to have a good time. As I was looking on, on social media and looking on, on the news, just following the media a little bit, I noticed that a lot of people are stressed out and they're worried right now, and they're, they're very discouraged, and there's almost a weight. You can almost see a physical weight sitting upon them. So what I wanted to talk about today is stress and worry, and we know that stress and worry, it does so many things to our bodies. You can <clears throat> have a student that's getting ready to go into a, an exam or to take a test, and it'll upset their stomach. It literally affects the body. Stress and worry can even cause cancer, hypertension, just all kinds of things. It literally af- affects our body. So that's what I want to look at today is just stress and worry and see what the Lord says about it. Amen? Because it doesn't matter what I say. It matters what He says. So we're going to get right into it, and I want to open by saying this. It's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. It's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. Because a lot of people, when they think with, with their health, they have to watch what they eat. And I understand that. I'm not, not putting that down. But it's not what you're eating, it's what eat, is eating you. You can be eating a to- totally healthy diet, but the stress and the worry that is eating at you can destroy your body. So you can eat all the carrots, all the vegetables that you want, but if you're stressed all the time, it will begin to deplete your system and actually hurt your body. You know I'm telling you the truth, right? So we're going to get into it. Our text today in Matthew 6 is part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave. And you've probably read through it many times, but today I want to point out maybe some areas that we just, when we read, sometimes we half read, or we just breeze through it and we don't really stop and think and dig into the text and say, Lord, show me what you're talking about. So I want to do this today. I want to get into it. And you might be saying, well, Joe, I'm not really stressed. I don't feel that stressed out. Well, just just hold on to this because Jesus doesn't want us to live a stressed out life. And some people with communion, we understand it's for our healing. They say, well, I don't need to take communion. I'm not sick if it's for my healing. But divine health is better than divine healing. I would rather be healthy than to need healing. Amen? It's the same with this. It's divine just peace and and joy and and righteousness. And when you know that, we're going to get to that in a minute. When you get that on the inside, you don't have the stress and the worries that come with life. All right? So we're going to get into it. Matthew 6 and verse 25. Hang with me. I'm going to travel quickly. We have a lot of ground to cover. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry. Just say that with me. Say, do not worry. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So what is worry? Worry is stress. It's torment, right? Most of the time when we read this passage, we think he's talking about food and clothing. But I want to dig a little bit deeper and see what Jesus is telling us. Because after all, these are red letters, right? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Now I want to look at those words is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. So we're going to add one word in here. We're going to add the word quality. And you can add when it enhances the word of God. That's where we get the amplified version of the Bible is they've added to it, but it it intensifies, it it illuminates what what you're reading. And we're going to do that today. We're going to use the word quality. So is not quality of life more than food and quality of body more than more than clothing. In other words, this is what he's saying. What is the point in having delicious food if your life is rotten? If you have a terrible life, what's the point in having really good food? Or having beautiful clothes, if you have the most expensive clothes, luxurious clothes, but your body's falling apart or you can't even get out of bed. He says, what's the point in all that? So what God is saying is that your quality of life is more important than the food that you eat. The quality of your body is more important than the clothes that you're putting on. Do you see this? All right, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So he's not saying that we don't have to work, that he's going to provide for us like the birds. He's not saying that. But he's saying that we don't have to live with the world system in mind. We don't have to live by their system. 
we have a God who takes care of us. And this is why some people get upset with Christians, because we just seem to be blessed. We know what it is, of course. We call it divine favor. But you fall over in a mud puddle and you get up and say, hey, I found a $50 bill. And they say, I don't understand how you could do that. I don't understand how all this stuff, they call it luck. But we know it's God's favor, amen? He says, I can take care of you. If I can take care of the birds and the flowers we're getting ready to get into later, the lilies, he says, then I can take care of you. I can take care of my people. So there's no reason to stress and worry about it. So you have to understand this in this passage. He was talking to fishermen and he was talking to farmers and they're used to sowing. They're used to, to the reaping process. They're used to harvesting and storing in barns. But he's letting them know that with God on your side, you can skip some of the labor. And that's what he wants you to see today is some, he's getting ready to do something in your life that looks like it could take two years. He says, I can do that in a weekend because I'm a God of more than enough. I'm a God of exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. Amen? <clears throat> so say this with me. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready too. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Notice how he says this. He says, your heavenly Father feeds them. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Notice that he didn't say their heavenly Father. Not the bird's heavenly Father. He says, your heavenly Father. What he was doing is he was trying to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. He says, I'm your father. I'm your father. Do you not see this? In the Gospel of Luke, during the Sermon on the Mount, he goes one step further and he says, consider the ravens. So why would he say consider the ravens? Because ravens were considered unclean according to Levitical law. They were unclean, so they weren't supposed to touch them. So God is saying, if I can take care of the ravens who are unclean, don't you think I can take care of you? And he will take care of those unclean ravens. He can surely take care of you and me. Amen? God wants you to have quality of life. And here's what I want you to see. Birds don't stress out about the economy, right? Birds don't stress out about their jobs. They don't stress out about money or wars or politics. They just sing. And your heavenly Father takes care of them. So that's what I'm saying is we're going to get into this maybe next week. <clears throat> but he says, cast all your cares on me. Cast, cast it all. The birds don't stress out. They just go around. They just fly around singing, right? Because they're not worried. They're not weighted down. They don't live a stressed out life with that weight. You're not designed to carry the weight you're carrying right now. Let me just tell you that right now. You are not designed to carry that weight. Cast all your cares on Jesus for he cares. Amen. Let's look at verse 27. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? This lets us know that he's, he's talking about the body, his quality of the body. Because he says stature. Stature in the Greek means two things. It means height and lifespan. Depending on what version you're reading, it could be either way. How can you, by worrying, increase your height? Some versions say that. How can you, by worrying, increase your lifespan? Other versions say that. But they're both right. In other words, how can you positively affect your body by worrying? How is it going to positively affect you? It's not going to help you grow. It's not going to nourish you. But we do know that when you worry, it negatively affects you, right? Right? Somebody say amen. <laughs> Do you think that God isn't pleased when we're worry-free? Of course he is. He wants you to be worry-free. He wants you to be stress-free. And our enemy is the devil, right? But he doesn't go about, the Bible says he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't go around with a red suit and a pitchfork. He's like a roaring lion. And if sitting where you are right now and you're watching me, if a lion came into the room and just roared real loud, would it create stress in your life? Of course it would, right? You'd start to worry. You'd, you'd get stressed out a little bit. The roaring creates stress, which comes from worry. I want you to see that. I'm worried that I'm going to die. I'm worried that I'm about to be eaten. So it brings stress into my life. Worry, fear, and stress are all related. You have to know that. All right, Mark chapter 5. We'll turn over there really quickly. I want to show you something. Mark chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 35 and 36. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. When we use our faith to combat worry and fear, God's blessings will begin to flow into our life. Amen? It's like that hose that has there's a kink in it. 
When we use our faith to combat worry and fear and say, I believe rather than being afraid, all of the blessings flow. That's what grace is all about, believing, right? When we live a life of worry, it restricts the flow into our lives. What is worry? It's doubt in disguise. You're, you're really, when we're worried, we're doubting that God can bless us. We're doubting that he can heal us. Doubting that he can bless me financially. Doubting that he can get me a better job. Doubting that this can happen. Are you with me? That's what worry is. Let's go back to Matthew 6 and we'll move on to verse 28. You doing all right? <laughs> Going kind of quickly. <clears throat> so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. How they grow, so now again he's talking about the health, how they grow, he's talking about their health. They neither toil. The word toil in the Greek means hard, laborious work. They don't have to work hard. They neither toil nor spin, but God takes care of them. Verse 29, And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So did God clothe Solomon in all his glory, or did Solomon do a little bit of the work too? I want to show you something that I think many times gets overlooked. Turn over to 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 10. 1 Kings 10, <clears throat> verse 10. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, gold spices in great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the king of Sheba gave to King Solomon. So 120 is the number of God. There were 120 people in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. There were 120 priests in Solomon's temple. Now let's go down to verse 14. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold. 666. Does that sound familiar? 666. 666 talents of gold. He taxed the people greatly. He put a yoke on their neck. Now turn over to chapter 12 of 1 Kings. I'll show you what I'm talking about. 1 Kings 12 and verse 4. Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us and we will serve you. So what's he talking about? The burdensome yoke, the heavy yoke is taxes. He said your father Solomon taxed us greatly with a heavy yoke. Now why is this important? Because not, of, not all of Solomon's glory was from God. Some of his glory was because of his laborious effort because he taxed the people. He did things in his flesh. He didn't totally trust God. Some he worked and he toiled and he fought in his flesh to bring it about, to bring some of the glory. It wasn't all God's glory. Remember that wisdom brings riches, it brings honor, and it brings long life. Remember we've been through that before. So now go to 1 Kings chapter 3. We're going to back up. I'll show you something else. 1 Kings 3, 12 and 13. <clears throat> Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. God is speaking to Solomon. I've given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall, be, shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days." So God gives Solomon a wise and understanding heart. He gives him riches and he gives him honor. Now verse 14. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Solomon didn't walk in God's ways. He didn't keep his statutes and his commandments. So God didn't lengthen his days. Solomon died in his 60s. We don't talk about this near enough. He, he ascended to the throne in, around the ages anywhere from 18 to 25, and he was over Jerusalem. He served Jerusalem for 40 years. So he died in his 60s, but he didn't follow God's statutes. He didn't follow what God told him to do. He, he let God bless him and give, bring him some glory, but then Solomon says, I'm going to do a little bit to help you out, God, and I'm going to tax the people so I can bring more in. And whenever we don't trust God 100% and we start to do things on our own, we step outside of what we call the umbrella of protection and that blessing, and then that's when we get into trouble. And that's exactly what happened to Solomon. So I wanted to show you this. Now let's go back to Matthew 6, 29. Matthew 6, 29. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And that's where we get this from, talking about his glory. Some of the glory was from God, but then Solomon says, I'm going to help with the glory. So that was just a detour. I just wanted to show you that. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
When we read this passage, many times we get stuck on the clothing part, but I want you to think with me. Does a lily have clothing? No. If you undress a lily, what happens? It dies, right? You're going to kill it. So Jesus is speaking of the actual, the health of this flower, of the lily, speaking to, about health. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. He's talking about health. He's talking to us about our health. Now go to verse 30. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So we're going to break this down into different sections. He says, close the, the grass of the field. Close it with what? With health. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? If grace makes and faith is how I take it, how I gain access to it, he's saying, O you of little taking. O you of little faith. He wasn't just putting, we look at that and say, O you of little faith. Jesus is speaking down to people, O you of little faith. He's actually saying, O you of little taking. You, faith is how you access, is how you receive. Your believing gives you access to what's made available. Oh, you of little taking. Why do you take so little? That's what he was asking them. Why do you take so little? Let's read that again, verse 30. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So let's look at the next part, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Many people like to think that God only cares about the big things in our lives. He only cares about the, the, the grandiose things, the wonderful things. He doesn't care about what you wear. He doesn't care about where you live or what you drive. But if he cares enough to take time to clothe the grass of the field with good health, then he cares about every detail of your life. Amen? Psalm 37, verse 23 from the New Living Translation says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their life, of their lives. He delights in every detail of their lives. This is why I teach like I do. I believe God delights in every detail of your life, not just salvation, not just enough to get us to heaven, every detail. That means that he delights in your finances, in your health, your relationships, your family, your church, your job, your career, every detail. The reason I share this is I've, I've heard pastors get up and say, God doesn't care about the little things. Don't waste your time praying about the little things. Well, that's not what the Bible says right here. He delights in every detail. I looked that word up in the Greek, every. You know what it means? Every. <laughs> every detail. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> just messing with you today. All right, Matthew 6, 31. I'm just having a good time. I wish you were here. When we get back together, we're going to have a good time. 31 and 32. <clears throat> Therefore, do not worry. Say that with me. Say, do not worry. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So what does the world seek after? If you go right now to Walmart and you go down the aisle getting ready to check out, look at the magazines right now. What, what are they? They're, they're concerning health and wealth, right? They're, that's what the magazines are about, health and wealth. That's what the world is after right now. So how do I receive everything that I need from God? Let's back up and read this again. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So how do I receive all this? How do I receive health and wealth and everything else that grace has made available to me? Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? All these things. What did we just read about in the verses right before this? Health and wealth. All these things will be added unto you. Now turn over to Romans 14, 17. I want to wrap it up with this. I want you to see how we're supposed to live this. How do we let this thing kick into high gear in our life and living stress-free? Give you some, a practical example. Romans 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking... So we just talked about that, right? The food and the clothing. It's not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that again. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Once you have Jesus in your life, you have righteousness, you have peace, and you have joy. It literally tells us that it's not what what we are eating or drinking that gives us quality of life and quality of body. It's not what we're eating and drinking. What, what is it that gives us that? Righteousness, peace, and joy. In other words, it's what's on the inside of you that will give you quality health 
and quality life, quality body. Are you following me? That's what it is. It's what it's coming out. The, the believer lives now from the inside out. So this is what we do to make this practical is wake up every morning when you wake up. Be aware of righteousness, peace, and joy. Make those your priorities. So here's how you do it. Wake up in the morning knowing that you've been made righteous. Before you get out of bed, you open your eyes. You just, I know that I'm right with God. I'm in right standing with God. I'm getting out of the bed with righteousness, knowing that Jesus paid it all, that it's his righteousness, not mine. Amen? Number two, peace. Wake up in peace. Peace is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Peace that passes all understanding. It's not the absence of chaos and confusion. It's the presence of someone. Get out of bed aware of the presence of the Lord on the inside of you and resting upon you. Number three is joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength, right? So how do I do this every morning? You get up out of bed singing. Get up out of bed worshiping with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You're literally living from the inside out. And this is, this is the key right here. This is, what many, this is the mistake I've made and many make, is we get out of bed, we check out Facebook, our phone. All of a sudden, we start to feel a little discouraged. Then we go turn on the TV we gotta, while we're getting breakfast ready or getting ready for work or whatever. We're watching CNN or Fox News, MSNBC. And all of a sudden, you just feel that your spirit is being contaminated. <clears throat> here comes the stress. This is what the enemy is doing. He's loading you up with stress, worry, anxiety before you've even started your day. So the, the Word of God is saying, when you get up in the morning, become aware of righteousness, peace, and joy. When you wake up in the morning, your first thought ought to be, I'm in right standing with God. I'm a child of the Most High King. Somebody say amen. And you get up with that. And I have peace that passes all understanding. I have the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not the absence of chaos. So whatever happens through the day, it doesn't matter. He is with me. He is on the inside of me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And then I have joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I wake up worshiping. I wake up shouting. I wake up in the presence of the Lord and I'm living from the inside out. So no matter what Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and all the others say, no matter what Facebook says, it doesn't matter because I'm living from the inside out and they cannot steal my joy. Amen. They can't take my peace. They can't take my righteousness because as a believer, I'm living from the inside out rather than the outside in. The world lives from the outside in trying to get all of the things. We live from the inside out. And God says, I'll take care of the things. <laughs> Amen. I mean, that ought to make you happy this morning, make you shout a little bit. The more that you begin to believe what we just read, the more you're going to notice that stress and worry just leaves your life. And you're just going to begin to go just smooth through life because God's with you. Amen. My job, you'll understand, my job is to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And God's job is to add all the things. See, it's the total opposite of what the world is teaching. The world says, go after all the things. And what they do is they, they spend their whole life. They graduate high school, graduate college, and they go to work. And they spend their, whole, they spend their health trying to get wealth. And then when they get the wealth, they spend all of their wealth trying to get their health back. You see this? That's exactly the way the world does. But God doesn't have it set up that way. He says, you live it from the inside out. Wake up with righteousness, peace, and joy. It's, it's in the Holy Spirit. It's on the inside of you. And when you live from the inside out, he says, I'll bring all the other stuff into your life. And you don't have to stress. You don't have to work. You don't have to toil. It will just show up. Amen. The transformation has to take place in here first, in your heart. It's believing. And when it takes place in here first, everything else will fall into place on the outside. The problem, I'm going to tell them preachers right before I close here, the problem is we come to church and we hear about all the symptoms and the pastors and preachers, we preach, and I'm guilty of it. I used to do it. I preach on the outside all of the things we need to get right rather than going after the heart. God says, I'm going after your heart. You, if I get the heart right, then everything else will fall into place. Amen. Does that make sense this morning? So I just wanted to share that with you and encourage you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God did not design you to carry that much stress. He didn't design you to carry worry and all of the things that you're carrying. It can literally weight you down. So what you have to do is wake up in the morning aware of his presence on the inside. Amen. It's on the inside. He's resting upon you with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And now all the stress and everything else goes away because you wake up in his presence. Amen. I'm just about to preach myself happy. I just miss you guys. I can't wait till we get together again. It's going to be an awesome time. So go ahead and grab your communion elements. We'll take communion together and we'll close out the service today. Go ahead and grab your communion elements and we will get ready, your juice and your bread or your wine, however you do it. 
we'll get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper together. I'm so glad we're able to do this still, even though we're not together. It's still, I feel like it still brings us, it brings us closer to one another, closer to our Father as we do this together online. Thank you, Lord, for that. I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Go ahead, grab your juice and your bread. I just want to pray just for a moment. Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you. I thank you for a praying church, a worshiping church, a church that's in love with you. Lord, I just thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. And we stand upon your word today that by your stripes we are healed. We understand, we discern what this is for. We understand that this is for our healing. It is also to remember you. But for everything that sin brought in, you've made a way out. And we thank you for that. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, by your stripes we're healed. 1 Peter 2.24 says, by your stripes we were healed. Past tense, it's a done deal. So we believe in the finished work on the cross. And Lord, we say thank you for the price that you paid. And every time that we drink this, this cup and eat this bread, we're ratifying the new covenant. We're making it official. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm so glad we were able to connect today and hang out together. What an awesome time getting into his word and also taking the Lord's Supper together, taking communion is so awesome. I can't wait to see you guys again until we're back together. What an awesome time we're going to have. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to just give you big hugs and that we'll be high-fiving, touching your neighbor and all that stuff. We, the way we used to have church, I can't wait till we do that again. But until then, I just want to encourage you, stay in faith. And when you get out of bed every morning, remember righteousness, peace, and joy. It's yours. It's on the inside. So you don't have to let any stress, any fear, any doubt, any worry contaminate you anymore because you're living from the inside out. So stay in faith. I love you guys.